come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming to you from the netherworld of the dank, dark basement. We watch movies every week that are chosen round robin by one of the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. Sorry, Sean's not here. It messed yeah. me up. It's his fault. <laughs> Sean's fault. Who's going to do the shouting? I will. Who's going to do the <laughs> clapping? Who's going to get very angry and It'll upset? get awkward as we figure it out on the spot. That's right. <laughs> I do my best to fill in Colin. Who's going to make the terrible puns? Well, uh, I mean, we all share that I mean, burden. We all kind of share that. <laughs> all right. Uh, so thanks for listening again. If this is your first rodeo, please go over to uh, wherever you found us, be it Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Google Play or iHeartRadio or iTunes or uh, sorry, uh, TuneIn Radio or YouTube. Leave us a comment. Give us a star rating or a like or a thumbs up. Subscribe. Or, do all the things. And uh, give us a review. Uh, take a little time. Write a little review. We're not asking for money. We're not on Patreon or anything. Uh, it's free. Just give us a little review there. That helps us get found by other folks like you who love the same kind of shit that we do. Which would be tonight's movie, which was chosen by... Holly, mm. what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a little movie called Idle Hands. Direct, uh, from the year... 1999. And directed by... Rodman Flender. Who else? What? Rodman Flender? <laughs> that's, a, that's a name? <laughs> that's a name. All right. Rodman I'm Flender. I'm you on that. Yeah. Rodman Flender. Rodman Flender. That sounds like that's a music real. video director. Yeah. Yeah. He was also in... Carnosaur one, two, and three. What? Yeah, it was a different role in each movie. What? But he was in all three of them. Well, we just watched Carnosaur last week. Who was he in Carnosaur? It's a, it's a senator's assistant, and then the other oh, two. That guy. No, but the yeah. other, the second and third one, like his character actually had a name and a title, so he becomes a more prominent character. Wow. But yeah, if you go look at his IMDb, like Carnosaur three is like the third listed thing on his like featured IMDb. Because <laughs> I went What's to the second. Now I'm curious. Um, so it's I'll, like I'll Idle up. Hands. Yeah, because uh, something well, very he, important. He, act, and he like Carnosaur acted. 3. He like did a little bit of everything, so he's probably not good at anything in particular. Rodman. Uh, Rodman. Yeah, he, he got his. He got his start uh, working for Roger Corman. Didn't they all? They yeah. Yeah. He did. What did he do for Roger Corman? He was like uh, something, like production something. On what? On the Carnosaur. Like movie. lots of so like lots like of that movies. Era. Yeah, like he was yeah. like wor- like for his, not just specifically on certain projects, like for his company. Yeah, he was like working for Roger Corman. So yeah. he comes from the shitty era of Roger Corman mm. when they were doing movies like Deep Space <laughs> or Dead Space, the remake of yeah. Forbidden World. Remember that? And the uh, yeah, what else did they do? Those those dreadful remakes of. Uh, not of this earth. Yeah. Right, oh, Tracy yeah. Lords. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a Roger Corman joint, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so Rodman Fleeterer. Flender. Flender. It sounds like a fake, like a neighbor on a sitcom. Mm-hmm. It it sounds like a Rodman guitar. Flender. <laughs> the Rodman yeah. Flender. Yeah, it strung does. upside down for a <laughs> yeah, left handed genius. Um It does sound like a guitar. Uh, <laughs> um so yeah, uh, Idle Hands, yeah. right? Yeah, he directed. Um, he directed Leprechaun Two, and he Rodman did, did. He did, and he did a lot of. T- he did a lot of TV, a ton of TV, a, t- a lot of TV, and actually, like specifically, like things that I've and been in love with, like my whole life. He did like Party of Five and Dawson's Creek, The and Office, Gilmore Girls, The Office. He did uh, some of the Scream series. Like he's done. A Still shit- working to this day. He's done a shit ton of TV. Yeah. Yeah. One of those guys who can play the game. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, you can put a camera here and you come in, you say this. He's very quick, probably <laughs> efficient. They're just like, yeah. He gets the job done. He's, he's the guy reliable. who gets the job done. <laughs> yep. He has a crew who also gets the job done. Mm-hmm. Not one of them actually thinks anything about like what they're doing. It's just like, nope, this is how we do it. We've done yeah. it forever. Yep. Boom. They have a job in Hollywood. Is, is this his, uh, for his directorial debut? Was it? This? No. Wait, what year was Leprechaun 2? I have no idea. That it had was, to have been before this because the first actually one was... Actually, had to yeah, be before this because yeah. Leprechaun this. was 92, right? So I'm sure Leprechaun yeah. 2 is like 94. Yeah, like that something. was before this. This guy has 38 directing credits. Yeah. His, direct, his first movie was The Unborn. Wait. In 1991. Nope. 
Wait. And then in the heat of passion, 1992, Leprechaun 294. Then he directed two episodes of Tales from the Crypt. Mm-hmm. Um, some more, a lot favorites. of TV, Chicago Hope, Party Five, a lot yeah. of TV, Dawson's Creek. Yep. And then it gets to Idle Hand. Okay. Idle Hands. Oh, wow. So he was an experienced journeyman mm-hmm. yeah. at the point when he made this film. He was. Um, who stars in this uh, epic masterwork? Uh, the beloved 90s hero, Devin Sawa. <laughs> okay, you say beloved 90s hero. I know him from Final Destination. Yeah. And That's because you're not a girl that grew up in the 90s. Really? I, so, like, I mean, the Devin Sawa, Devin Sawa thing kind of missed me, too. Well, because like, you were younger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because someone, cause someone uh, one of our listeners actually messaged me, and they're like, said something about you having a crush on him. I was like, no, 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 this is me having a crush yeah. on him. This was it. it Michaela me. was too young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had a crush on Devin Sawa. Oh yeah, I had posters in my room. Did like, you? What? Okay. Oh yeah. What, what movie did it start Who the with? Fuck for you? is this guy? It started with Casper. No, oh, see that's started, that's why I have a problem with him. So who's he in Casper? Casper? He's I Casper at the end. He's uh, Casper, he's the kid that died and turned into the ghost. Oh, yeah. and, and that's was, where you fell in love with him because you're about that age. You're like. I was like, this guy. I was like 11, 12, and then he was in Now and Then. Yeah, again. Let, that's that's fire. my biggest exposure. Now, now and then. then. Now and yeah. then. Nope. I don't know what it is. Oh, you God. would not have seen it, Colin. Coming yeah. of age story. Yeah. <laughs> Four young girls. Yeah, yeah. and like what oh, the sixties. In the sixties. Yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. A lot of stars in that movie. A lot of stars. And David Sawa was in it. He was yeah. in it. Yeah. 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 That's his second time with Christina Ricci yeah, too. Yeah. Christina Ricci's in it. Gabby Hoffman, Thor Birch, and then as like playing older them as Rosie O'Donnell, Demi Moore. And uh, Rita Wilson, mm-hmm. um, Melanie Griffith. There's a lot of wow. stars in it. Yeah, yeah it's a th- listeners. You got to tell deal. us. Is this like in your wheelhouse? You've seen all these movies. It's a big. Mo- it was a big movie. Oh, it's yeah. a big movie, listeners. I watched this a lot. When okay, I was a kid. I just I'm sure they're all on with TV you. All yeah, the time. but like, and then he went on. He was in uh, Wild America with John Taylor Thomas again. That's a power yeah. power duo wow. there. Oh yeah. Okay. In the, so. the '90s, there's no bigger power duo than yeah. those two men. So by the time you're saying like, I never heard of the guy before Final Destination, and then I never That's heard the of him after. That's the end of his career. It, after the Final that. Destination was after this. Was, was it? Hands. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. That's the end of his career. Is Final I, Destination? Oh, is that? Two, he was That's in, 2000. And he was in right? SLC Punk too. I saw that yeah. movie. Yeah. That was with the uh, dude from Scream, Matthew Lillard. Lillard yep. I, I like that movie. Yeah. Decent yeah. yeah. movie. Devin Sawa was in the sequel to that, though, too. He, he is, did a yeah. second one, and he huh. showed up for that. So Devin so yeah, Sawa, oh yeah. Devin heartthrob Sawa. poster like, boy. Decade of my life with Devin Sawa. Yeah. 17 mm-hmm. magazine. Oh, yeah. 16 bop. Yeah, Teen he meat. was all over that. So that's yes. why the girls all heard of Devin Sawa <laughs> yes. and drool over Devin Sawa. Indeed. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I had no idea, because yes. I was like, who in the fuck? Like, why do people know this guy? Mm-hmm. Because we got some comments, which we'll read later. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know who the fuck Devin Sawa is? Yes. Okay. I always thought he had a name that sounded like a Star Wars character. Devin Sawa. Like <laughs> so he's like a bounty hunter out of yeah, the outer like, rim. It didn't sound like a normal human name to it me ever. No. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. I always like stumble over pronouncing it too. Something about that last name fucks me up, man. It doesn't sound I know. right. Every time I say it, I'm like, that's got to be wrong. Yeah, it's well, got to be. So Devin Sawa, he's uh, like a, you know, in this movie, he's a teenager. He's probably in his 20s when yeah. he actually did it. Stoner. Is slider, that a yeah. flock of seagulls he's got going on there? What do you have? No. What is that hair? hairdo? Yeah. No. Okay, I have no idea. It's just 90s hair. Oh, it's 90s hair. Okay. It's just 90s Devin Sawa yeah. hair. Yeah. This is a 90s movie. You it know, is it's kind of, well. Much. I think that's when you actualize the decade. Is especially well. No, probably like in the middle of the decade is when you're like self actualized. You're like, no, we're leaving the '80s behind, mm-hmm. and we're '90s is all yeah. hell. We're grunge. We're doing our thing. Yeah. yeah. Is it yeah. grunge or is it new metal at this point? Because this movie has, as I pointed out, has a music supervisor. Do we have those anymore? I music don't think supervisors so. I think so. credited at the very beginning of the movie. Well, I we think- don't have credits at the beginning of the movie anymore, but. Well, and yeah, and it also says a lot when you have someone from your soundtrack make a guest appearance in the movie. The Offspring yeah. is the offspring. in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. this is like the cusp of that grunge to new metal time. Yes. I think I new think metal so. hits its full swing by like 2002. Okay. But like this, it's a it's starting to turn over yeah. right now right. in this movie. You can see it happen in this yeah. movie. Yeah. This is like this is like Blink 182. Yeah, they're really they're really yeah. rolling and yeah. yeah. Mm. And he's wearing yeah. an AFI t-shirt. Yeah, that yeah. I that. Uh, made me like kind of 
messed up on the time frame of this movie a little bit because AFI is a completely different band with every album they put out, basically. Yeah. And like the AFI that I knew in like 2005 was a completely that different Murder? band. Is yes, that that's the era I know. Yeah. Yes. That's the AFI I know. Well, because, yeah. because this was like pre anyone knowing who AFI was because it was his record label was the ones that that put that like got them famous. Devin Sawa's record oh, label? Sorry, the Offspring. Oh, what's his oh, name? Okay. The oh, Dexter Holland? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was. He had a record yeah. album. His, or a record yeah, label. His label signed AFI. Signed AFI. So this was him like promoting them. Okay. Yeah. Right, we're, de- we're deep diving placement. into the 90s. Yeah. This. this is your we're favorite decade. I love it. I know. I notice I get like a lot of, I pick a lot of 80s and 70s movies. Yeah. Holly is like exclusively like the 90s, except for. Uh, so is Sean. Not exclusively. Yeah. So He's Sean. exclusively 90s too. Yeah. Okay. Not exclusively. <laughs> A lot. 99%. Well, I mean, but yeah, I suppose we all do that, right? You're my going first, back to this is comfort food for my you. My first picks on the on the freak show were like Legend and The Last Dragon. Totally I thought 80s. it was my boyfriend's totally back. Is that, that was, was that my yours? First pick. Okay. I didn't pick that until Michaela was here. Yeah, that was like two years ago. Yeah. Okay. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I thought all, there that was, was like 150 While I was watching ago. this movie, I thought a lot about my boyfriend's back. Did you? I did. Um, so <laughs> what is this uh, film about? Starring Devin Sawa and and who's and, oh, the other yeah. uh, soon to be star for the out of this movie? I assume you mean Seth Green. Well, of course <laughs> I did. I mean, who else would I be talking about? Seth Green, star of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, his right. most memorable role, right? Well, no. I don't know. That guy's been in everything. That's right. He but pops you up haven't everywhere. Haven't lived until you've seen the Attic Expeditions, where Seth Green clearly did this movie to for a paycheck, and he imitates Jeff Goldblum. Like he, because he's like no one's ever going to see this, and so I'm going to right. I'm going to take the mannerisms and the vocal cadence of Jeff Goldblum and do an entire performance as Jeff Goldblum. That sounds awesome. It's freakish. It's freakish. Watch. Is it, it really yeah. good? Uh, no, the movie's bad. No, I, I mean no his one... performance, like doing Jeff Goldblum. Does he do a good job doing Jeff? It's Goldblum? so obvious that he's doing Jeff mm. Goldblum it's that it's distracting. Distra- oh, yeah. Does it feel like you're watching like an extended SNL bit? Almost, you're like, okay, I get it. That's your that's it's your all... Jeff Goldblum impression. You know, somehow I keep stumbling upon these uh, like far out left field. No one else is going to see the movies where like actors do weird shit. I saw Corey Feldman in a movie called The Birthday. I don't think this movie's been released, right? I saw it at a film <laughs> festival. Corey Feldman is doing like some kind of, uh, it was like a Jerry Lewis type what? character where what? he's like, oh, mousy and talking. It was this weird sounds as really hell. hard to watch. That sounds awful. Oh, and it's real time. It was a real time movie. Oh, you? no, yeah. that's even worse. No. Yeah. Real time movies never edit anything out. That's the problem. No. I know. Yeah. yeah. It had <laughs> something. Yeah. It ended up with his wife gave birth to like some, you know, Lovecraftian thing. It was what? all in a hotel. Wasn't there a movie like, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 11 years ago now with like Elizabeth Olsen that was like a real time horror movie? Yeah, that was. Where um, like she was going into like a house. A silent house? Something like that, yeah. It's a remake of a Spanish movie, which was better than the American. Was that a real time movie too, the Spanish one? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember like the marketing campaign was like, experience a horror movie in real time. And like that was how they were yeah. pushing it. Yeah, it's a cool, cool idea, but you can't edit anything. I just remember so. like specific things about. Yeah, I guess maybe both of them. Did the American one do some? Of the, I think it did. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, this is also a problem that I have with watching too many goddamn movies. I see all the movies that like American movies rip off or uh-huh. remake before they do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh, I saw that already. Um, so this one, uh, Seth Green Seth is Green. in it. Also, Jessica Alba. There we go. There it is. Okay. I know. I know that's what you. The wanted. biggest star from that who ended up out of the right. Yeah. Well, I know you're yeah. saying. Yeah, Devin she's Sawa like a bajillion. No, I'm now. not saying Devin Sawa was a huge star. I'm saying he meant he a was lot for in the a 90s. while. He's, okay. All he right. was. Yeah. His and star that, burned bright and fast. Yes. <laughs> yes. He was a big deal to young teenage girls in the 90s. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Mm. Mm-hmm. Big right. star? No. Although I do still follow him on social media, and he's actually pretty funny. Is he still working? Is he yeah. on JAG? No. I'm sure he's like, he, I want to He's shows. probably on like some NCIS yeah. sort He's of done thing. a lot of TV like that. Yeah. Um, next month, he has a movie coming out, and I don't know like where it's coming out or you know where it's actually being released. You're not going to plug it for him? Uh, no. I'm. Well, uh, what's it called? I forgot. I wrote it down. Oh, it's um The Fanatic. 
and it's starring John Travolta. And oh, it's this directed, is the Fred directed by Fred Durst. Yes, yeah, the Fred oh. Durst movie. Yes. Oh my god! And this thing's been in production hell for yeah, a long John time. John Travolta's like some crazy fan. Yeah, and Devin Sawa plays like an action hero that John Travolta's oh. obsessed with. Really? Yes. And it was originally called like Moose, right? Yes, it was yeah. called Moose, and they yeah. changed the name. This- yeah. I, like I said, I don't know where it's coming out. Yeah. I don't know where it's being released or anything, but yeah. I think it's I, our duty to, to watch video. it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Unless, uh, what was it, uh, Fathom Event? No, who put out? Oh, Movie Pass. Movie Pass. Gotti. Yeah. The movie, I was say, which I still haven't seen, but like say, it's mentioned it's, on this show yeah. more than, that's your trick or treat. Yeah. Right? If, if, Gotti. if it's Gotti. anything like Gotti, like I am down for this. I yeah. want to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, so that's on the radar now. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Alba had done what before this? Because she, she looks done, really young. She's really young. She had done a lot of TV. Her first movie was Camp Nowhere in like 93 or something like Is that. Is that the one with Bill Paxton I keep talking about? No, that's Indian no, Summer. that's Never Indian mind. Summer. Um, no, Camp Nowhere um, was a bunch of kids like find an abandoned camp and go to like pretend to go to summer camp and fool their parents to letting them uh. go. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Like if if that were to happen in real life, that'd be fun. Like a Touchstone movie. I want to say like Christopher Lloyd might be. That sounds sounds right. Touchstone movie. I can see the poster in my head now that you said that. That kid from fucking General Hospital was in it. Remember Touchstone Pictures? Yeah, they were big in the nineties. I do remember. They were. Saw a lot of those. I did. Yeah, I saw Hollywood Pictures. (laughs) I think they were. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Um, Uh, But then she, and then um, right before this, she did Never Been Kissed with Drew Barrymore. Okay. Which again? Didn't she do the one again, where she was in, in the in bathing suit and like doing the it was deep blue not uh, into blue? the blue into, into the, the blue. blue that was way later okay. that was later yeah that was after she had popped off really became a star that was after yeah. Sin City was it yeah oh, okay Sin City Sin City's what made up. her like really famous was it yeah really I thought I knew who she before was before that it was that. like Honey was like the big oh, thing okay. she had done no nope, I don't know that <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, wow. you wouldn't. No, wouldn't. That's your type I knew of movie. Who she was when Sin before Sin City. Like, I feel oh, like Jessica we're Alba's teaching Colin a lot tonight. Yeah, yeah I know. It's, <laughs> this is where I am here to learn. Did you guys right. know that Jessica Alba is like almost a billionaire at this point? Because she surprised. has that skincare company, yeah. Honest Company or whatever, that got and, bought out for like hundreds of millions and did of she dollars. She has like a like a baby product company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She like never has to work again, but she still does. Apparently, I looked at her IMDb and she's done a ton of stuff. I've just never heard of any of it for like I mean, the past five years. Sin City yeah. Two. She well, that, that's Sin the City last two. time I saw her. But she's done like ten things since then. Yeah, well, I'm, there's did a you lot like of Sin things. City Two. No, I didn't. I will. Second really, one. No. Yeah, I really I wanted to. I really wanted to. All right. Did you? Yeah. I don't remember I feel hating like you it. Did. I remember the the <laughs> critical response was like it was so awful. I hate and I it. It's a completely it was like, different type of movie. Yeah. It was like, see, I thought it, was, it felt like a very it's, similar. It follows type of like movie. two stories instead of like six. Well, yeah, yeah. But, but all the characters feels like a much slower movie. Weave through it. Um, no, there's like three, is there? Because there's oh whatever. But what's, what's uh, like, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's story is so obviously written for Clive the movie, Owen, right? No, he's yeah, not. He, isn't he Joseph Gordon-Levitt? No, that's Josh Brolin. Okay. Cla- yeah. No, Joseph Gordon Levitt had a story that never touched anybody else's story. He was the gambler, remember? Yeah. yeah. His story was completely unrelated Green to everyone. Is in that movie, and I am mm-hmm. a mad fan of. Mm-hmm. I know you movie. are. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's why you like that, that movie. Part, She's naked that the whole be, movie. Right? That, yeah. Okay. All right. You got me. Uh, so, uh, also in this movie, Vivica A. Fox, mm. who we'd all know from Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> No, she's been in a bunch of stuff. Isn't she like TV now? Honestly, like without looking on IMDb, watching this movie, I was like, what the fuck else was she in besides Independence? Yeah, I honestly, I can't she's, remember she's one of those people that I don't know why she's famous. Yeah, I can't remember. Is she what famous? Else she was in. Well, I guess we, she know, was, her name. we know her name, right? She was at the time. Yeah. Like, I don't know why anybody in this movie. So, uh, so, uh, so I get why we also got Eldon Hansen. Who? Eldon Hansen. Who? Eldon Hansen. You know, the character actor that shows up in a million fucking things. He's in Daredevil. Yeah, Foggy Nelson, Foggy. man. Oh, shit. That's yeah. where I've seen that yeah. guy before. He's okay. also in the butterfly effect. <laughs> yeah, he's been in everything, dude. Yeah. I'm looking at that guy going like, I've seen this guy in something. Foggy Nelson. And okay, all right. she's all that. She's all that, yep. <laughs> and right. yeah, and the butter- he plays the same role in everything. He's, he's in. He's yeah. the schlubby best friend the in schlubby everything. Friend. Everything, yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's the schlubby, be- schlubby best friend yeah. of Devin Sawa. Yes. Devin Sawa is uh, so this this whole movie comes from the genre. Well, it's a crossbreed of two genres, maybe, maybe. Well, I three. mean, like it depends on where you're going with that. It's horror comedy. Hor- okay, yeah. let's go with the stoner comedy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say slasher movie. It's not really. 
Not really, because it doesn't follow the rules of a slasher movie at all. Right. So. Demon possession movie. Night, like Night of the Demons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Demon yeah. possession. I'll give it or like an the... Evil Dead 2. <laughs> yeah. Maybe riffing it's on heavily uh, riffing I was, on Evil I was Dead say it's Heavily riffing. Okay, on Evil so Dead why too. are you saying that? Because the it's a hand that gets possessed and cut off. Yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking I was going to say the third genre is the uh, severed hand movie. We've never like had a yeah. severed hand movie like that used to be a staple. Was it? Right. I don't know. Maybe it's yeah. always the. Uh, there's always been like yeah, we don't do severed hand movies enough anymore, right? Well, how many different things can you do with it? You know, yeah. like. Yeah, because it's always basically ends up the same way. I mean, I suppose this one directly feels like Evil Dead 2. Mm -hmm. Yes. The hand is possessed, so you cut it off, and then it keeps on crawling around doing shit. Because Mm -hmm. that's Evil Dead 2. Prior to that, it was always like... uh, we had movies like body parts. That's different, right? Where like somebody loses a hand, they get the killer's hand grafted on. Yeah, that's like... And then like I start feeling like the killer. But... Uh, oh, one that you should actually check out, right? Uh, Oliver Stone. Yeah, with uh, with Michael, Michael Caine. Caine. Yes, I've seen what? that movie. Yes, it's called. It's or wait <laughs> for it. The hand. The hand. It's Why have we not watched this on the freak show? It's considered Oliver Stone's worst movie ever made. Like it's, it is. Yeah. I've never seen Seizure. I guess that's his first movie. That was before he went to Vietnam. The yeah. hand he made when he came back from Vietnam. And Michael Caine is a comic artist because Oliver Stone mm-hmm. was all in the headspace if he was writing the Conan movie. So that's in, cool. In that, he Michael Caine is the artist who draws Mandro, the uh, you know basically Conan. He's mm-hmm. so he's Robert E. Howard or something like that, right? And he's an artist. He loses his hand in an accident. His cheating wife is like off doing something, and then she, I think, gets killed. Who killed her? Did he kill her? It turns out it's his hand. Right, Did, he's out there running around. How like like is this early in Oliver it's Stone's like career? Nineteen eighty one. I'm gonna. Put how it. how no, young is 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 Michael it is Caine? 81. Is it eighty one? Yeah, because I did. I compiled a list of hand movies. <laughs> did you right, really? Let me see if how many I can name. All yeah, right, quiz ready? Colin on. Okay, I've got. Okay, I have both. I have both killer hand movies and the subgenre of like you said, serial killers' hands attached to an innocent person type of movie. So so I, I it's both. body parts on I there. Body oh, he, parts that was his there. arm. He got a whole arm. Yeah, it was an arm. But yes, body parts. All on right, that let's list, go so. way back. I'm gonna go okay. with uh, um, the Beast with the Five Fingers. 40, 1944, 45, 46, 40, 1941, 46. Yes, 46. All right. Um, I've seen a movie called. I'm jumping around. Now. Yeah, yeah. And now the screaming starts. Yep. There is a severed hand in that movie. Yep. There's a severed hand in Dr. Torture's Terror Garden. What mm, the fuck's it called? Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. There, thank you. For yeah. That. Oh, that's with Christopher Lee. That's with Christopher Lee. He's an yeah. art. He's an art critic. I, I've seen this. What? He, I've seen this. I haven't. We haven't seen. Tell me about I've it. I've seen it. He's he's an art critic um, who's who's um, like stalked and tormented by the disembodied hand of um of an artist that committed suicide because of his critique. I want to watch yeah. this. Yeah, this sounds so this cool. Is this. It's I've a seen serial this. killer it's hand, right? It's always like, yes, yeah, sixty-six. Like the 66. person had the intent, right? And the yeah. hand gets separated, mm-hmm. and the person is now guilt-free because the hand is off. Yeah, it's the id superego thing, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's that's turn an, that hand loose. That's an anthology, though. Yeah, so it's, yeah, uh, so it's a short in within the anthology. Actually, I was going to say, and now the scream starts is, but it's not. That's a full movie. With it, yeah, but that one, the only thing people ever the remember gardener, is or whatever he gets yeah. his hand cut off. He's a rapist. They cut his hand with off. With that one, now the screaming starts. The only thing people ever seem to remember is that there's a woman that gets impregnated by a ghost. That's yeah. like what the only Maybe thing. Maybe that's what, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. People, that's like all they remember about that movie. And Peter Cushing's in it. He has Peter to fight Cushing. the hand. We already said the hand and Evil Dead 2. All right, so I'm going with. Um, I know. The creeping terror. No, that's not it. It's like the crawling hand or something. It's like a sixties movie, I think. The crawling mm. hand. Yep, the crawling hand. Okay, crawling 63. hand. I keep thinking of the hands of Warlock, but that's the other one. He gets killer yeah. hands, I think, grafted on. Yeah, that's, that's a good title. Nineteen twenty-four. Yeah, yep. hands of Warlock. Okay, I give up after that. I don't yeah. know. Uh, a couple more that. Oh wait, wait. There's yeah. Thing from the Adams Family, which brings us to this movie because okay. <laughs> uh, Thing from the Adams Family. Played by um, Christopher Hart, who played the severed hand in this movie. So that's he's like his thing, actor. huh? He's, he's a, a magi- slender hand actor. He's a magician. 
He's oh, a yeah? magician. He's a magician, yeah. Well, huh. he would be. Because then you get to do all, I can't even, yeah, it's the theater <laughs> of the mind. I'm doing those magician hand moves. I mean, I think Devin Sawa did a pretty good job with the with the hand acting. In I this. was kind of surprised how good of a yeah, job he did, he actually. Yeah, he did pretty good with it, to be honest. What the fuck are you talking, it was the most embarrassing thing, shit, that I've ever seen. Like, I have never had a, beta, a better, like, understanding and appreciation of the comic timing and genius. Genius. I'm going to go out and say genius. Performance of Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell is a fucking national treasure. We're right? not arguing that he isn't. I know, but like, like watching like, this movie. Yeah. Like, Two things can be good, Colin. Why yeah. have there not been Academy Awards for Bruce Campbell? Okay, sorry. I'm pretty sure he I got nominated for an Emmy at some point for Burn Notice. So, And he's he's won number. <laughs> what he's best known for. Right? Yeah, he's that's won what a he's... number of Chainsaw <laughs> that's what Award, he's... the Fangoria Chainsaw Award. So I'm sure, you know, the man's not hurting. For... It's not like Devin Sawa is getting Oscars. You know, yeah. it's, they're not well, competing yeah, no, with I each other. Yeah, yeah. I maintain that he did a pretty good job. Like right, I was then. impressed with with his hand acting. It was to me, it was the like leading with the hand that I was kind of impressed with. Yeah. Like uh, I was trying to figure out like when the, he was going down the basement stairs. I was like, is he legitimately just falling down these stairs? Right? And, like, did they just do that a million times? Like, hey, just keep falling down these stairs. Like, I was like trying to figure out how they. Did I know. That. This is how, most of this movie I spent figuring out how yeah. they did the effects and stuff. He I was actually, trying to figure I mean, out. like honestly, he actually did do a surprising amount of like physical acting in this movie. Like. Hmm. Like running into things and like throwing himself into things, like mm-hmm. he did kind of a lot, like mm-hmm. more so than he was directed to. What you're describing kind of is slapstick, right? But is this a slapstick I comedy think so. kind of movie? Yeah, yeah I think so. It's I, see, I don't know. There was some kind of tonal inconsistency when I was watching mm-hmm. it because I'm like, is it supposed to be funny? It didn't feel funny. But you were the only person not laughing. Uh, Holly and I true. were both yeah. laughing there were pretty frequently. Yes, because, uh, dear Brailers, as you know, Colin does not enjoy comedy. Yeah. So we have to take that into consideration for this movie. That's absolutely true. I it's know. true. <laughs> I do like comedies if they're funny. I mean, if uh, I like dark uh, black comedies, dark Dark. What is a comedy movie you find funny, Colin? You know, I, I keep on going back to this one. I thought was absolutely hysterical was the TV show Dexter. That's a funny fucking show. It, it has moments that are funny. It has, hilarious. It has moments that are funny, but That's I'm, my I'm kind of starting humor. to question whether... I'm curious what you find yeah. funny about it, though. Like his voiceover and all that stuff? You find the that irony. funny? Yeah. Oh, like when he's... Like when he's making a pun or, or like being sarcastic about something in his voiceover or just like there's just a lot of like uh like the situation it, and his reaction to it and i'm like that's fucking but that's what i'm saying is it intentional though is it supposed to be okay i think okay. it's that's intentional what I'm saying. so you yeah. like you like the dry humor gotcha that makes yeah, sense okay but i'm saying like yeah but yeah. E- even more so like the dark humor though it's like Ooh, yeah. this is no. There are moments where he is cringe. cringe there are moments fight. when he's basically being Ron Howard in Arrested Development and Dexter. <laughs> there, he does respond to scenes like that yeah. at certain points in time that are really funny. I was just curious what part of it you were finding funny. Yeah. So, but Dokes has some moments where he's unintentionally hilarious. So, surprise, yeah. motherfucker! That was like <laughs> that was like we were supposed to take that seriously, but it's hilarious. <laughs> That got memed. Yeah. It was the guy who kept on doing yeah. like, the different. Yeah, these fries, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Um. Sorry. Uh, what were the other uh, crawling hand movies oh. that you got on there? Yeah. Uh, which one didn't you say? You saw Invasion of the Saucer Men, nineteen fifty-seven. Wow. Wh- which is obviously an what a al- title. It's obviously an alien movie. Alien hand. An alien hand gets gets cut off and then starts her like tormenting people fantastic yeah, i agree i i want to see that one <laughs> <laughs> uh do we say severed ties no severed ties 1992 really that's a severed hand movie apparently no i haven't i have not seen it um they do mention uh one we watched on this show waxwork and waxwork 2 the hand is only briefly in waxwork it's more yeah prominent in waxwork 2 yeah the hand escapes at the end of the movie yep yeah and then um our sub genre the Genre that we were talking about, um, serial killer hands being attached to innocent mm-hmm. people. We, you mentioned hands of Orlac, um, body parts, mm-hmm. mad love, and hands of a stranger. Does yeah. does Ma- May mad count love for is, that? Uh, From 1935. I mean, May's like yeah, a whole uh, body. Peter Lorre. Um, yeah, because it's a whole body thing, but she yeah. doesn't like put them on herself. She's building a person. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. building a friend. I think it's a pretty good movie that nobody talks about anymore. I think it was one of those things that like 
in the early 2000s during the film festival darling kind mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. era there was this movie called may with angela bettis that you should probably check out it's a lot of people good. i heard did not weren't, didn't like the ending that was what i heard from a lot of people oh have you I seen was, it yeah i was fine yeah i didn't have a problem with it yeah like, yeah worked for me uh, that's the whole movie builds to it yeah, yeah it made uh, it right. made sense with where the movie was going yeah. for me so yeah. mm -hmm. i haven't seen it bittersweet i would say mm -hmm. um so we're making this out like it's a severed hand movie. Uh, it uh, it takes a long time getting it. I guess maybe that's what I had thought in the titles, Idle Hands. I, that obviously comes from, uh, where does the Idle Hands of the Devils play things? It's in the Bible. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> of it course from it is. A biblical <laughs> quote. Uh, and that, I'm here for all your Bible knowledge. <laughs> that's, so that, but that basically forms the logical system behind the movie because Devin Sawa is apparently a serial killer who doesn't know that he's a serial killer. His hand is forcing him to kill people. Because it's possessed. So this is where the like the demon possession aspect of the movie comes into play. Right. Okay. Okay. This is what this is what I, I don't know. Did I have a problem with it? Maybe. Maybe okay. you didn't have a problem with this. Okay. Uh, the movie has a has a cold open where Fred Willard. Mm -hmm. Is it Fred Willard? Am I yeah, saying yeah, that right? yeah, yeah, Fred Willard. Yeah. Okay, I thought that was like a different guy. Okay, nope, yeah, that's Fred Willard. It. I keep hearing him saying like, "What happened?" Wasn't he in? Uh, oh, <laughs> he's been in literally what everything. Guest movie was he's, that? It best was, in show. Was it best in show? He's what in happened? that. Yeah, he's been in it was a lot. on a TV show. And I used to say, "What happened?" Yeah. I was a little kid. Yeah. My fiance and I joke about that. Like, there has to be a rule in Hollywood that once you hit a certain number of episodes in a TV show, or once you've made a certain number of movies, like some guy comes around and be like, "So within the next three projects, you have to put Fred Willard in." Fred Willard. Right? Yeah. He's got it. You got to find a role for him. Doesn't matter how small, Especially but he has if it's to be a in comedy. It. <laughs> yeah. It announces that you're making a comedy. He's yeah. in it. He and his wife get killed. There's a big elaborate thing. Um. And it turns out that their slacker stoner son, Devin Sawa, yep. Anton, Anton, has committed these crimes. He It takes him like another 20 minutes to figure this out. Yeah. Which is not unrealistic because stoner kids are like that. Teenagers yeah. are pretty self-absorbed yeah. self as it is. Exactly. And then you add stoner on top of that. Yeah. And... This is a movie heavily obsessed with like, the guy. so the whole, you know, because I was actually going like, so what's the deal here? Like, are we are we for pot or against pot? At one point, he's like, I got to I'm like, this is going to be the thing where he has to leave, you know, the kind of teenage I'm a stoner slacker behind mm -hmm. and become a, uh, you know, like adult. And grow You're expecting a, a lot of up. this movie. And well, but everything's basically these myth and metaphor and all that stuff that kind of unconsciously gets put into movies that I don't think writers necessarily are always. Uh, aware of they're just doing it because like well the last movie did it's it. just like the natural place that they go with their story like yeah. they don't even there's the subconsciously they don't even realize they're doing it it's yeah. just where it goes i think yeah you know because we can't look at all film not all filmmakers are stanley kubrick right or right. chess players and thinking about all these moves some yeah. people just do like that worked in that last movie so let's do it in this movie. Some people I'm are Rodman Flender. Yeah. Rodman <laughs> Flender. There you go. He didn't write it though. No, he didn't write it. Okay. Um but yeah, I was like, so is this, where's this going with it? But basically, at some point, he does go, no, I'm giving all that up because I have to, you know, save the girl I love. But then at the end of the movie, it is, it turns out like uh, smoking pot is what saves the, <laughs> the day. That's right. Yeah. So it's a pro, pro pot movie. This is talking to an audience who is like 17 years old. Yeah. It's yeah. because they don't want to preach to their fucking audience. Mm hmm. They're not going to go in. It's not like, a lecture movie. It's not a lecture movie. It's a like, hey, this is what you like. We're giving it to you. Yeah. 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 But don't you? Well, OK. I was going to say like stoner uh, comedies don't try to achieve no. much. They're no. not trying to achieve You're really awesome anything for being a slack jawed couch living. That's derelict. every teenager. Yeah. yeah. A bum. Stoner or not. That is every yeah. teenager. There you go. Every teenager. The teenagers will save the day. It turns out, according to movies like uh, Idle Hands. So. This is also, I thought, kind of interesting. Well, he's got two he's two stoner buddies that live across right. the street. Right. That is Seth Green and... Yep. Eldon Hansen. Eldon Hansen. <clears throat> his best friends his and best dealer. Friends. So <laughs> why is his hand possessed? Because there is a demonic figure that possesses slacker teenagers. How do you know that? Vivica A. Fox. Who the hell is she? <laughs> the demon hunter. <laughs> okay. 
She could be cut out of this movie entirely and you would lose nothing. (laughs) We know that she's a demon hunter because of a throwaway line of dialogue Mm -hmm. where she basically says, I'm the longest line in a druid uh, succession of druid demon hunters. And there's this thing that possesses the most lazy person on the earth Mm -hmm. and it's evil and I have to kill it. I have the magical dagger. They always have the magical dagger. You got to have that fucking magical dagger. Who makes the magical daggers? I want to know. Because you make this thing, you never get to use it because the thing has never been killed by it, right? Right. Because that's why you're hunting it through all like eternity. So it's been passed down to her family. How do you make, how do you know that you bless it or something? Or it's, I don't know how these magical daggers are made. Sidebar, this is a movie idea. We can uh, develop this. So she's (laughs) off cruising around in her (laughs) Winnebago. So you want like a... Like a magical blacksmith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well, it takes place in a forge. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Because I'm imagining that ha- person has to exist. The magical blacksmith. Right. You got to fucking. You, they always have the magical knife. It's always a dagger. Right. Yeah. Or maybe a sword. A sword could be a sword. Yeah. It's a magical sword that that's one you have to use to kill the demon. I feel like that Nicolas Cage movie, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, kind of touched on some of that stuff. Because that was about, like, some kid going to learn from Nicolas Cage, who's, like, an old sorcerer. Right. Did and he blacksmithed his own. Did he like, make his own blades and stuff? They, like, it was, like, it was, like, going to school, basically, and learning, like, all the classes you need to go through to become this dude. Like Hogwarts? They, they wanted it to be that, yes. They were hoping that would kick off a franchise. That was a big-budget Disney movie that did not do them? well. Sorcerer's Apprentice? I don't think so. I, I think it was only it. one. I'm thinking remember, of the other. Yeah. Percy Jackson. And I the, remember those oh, movies yeah. all look the I same. I remember seeing it advertised like crazy, but I oh, never yeah. saw it. That was at a weird point in Nick Cage's career, too. I think that might have been like right I after like National Treasure. His career has been weird. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Fair point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, Yeah, Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. I mean, the greatest movie of all time is Face Off. It is. Both of them in the same movie. Um, Nicolas Cage turned down The Fanatic. We, no, we of course, have. of course, those guys are linked psychically throughout we, time. And I mean, I'm not mad about it being Travolta, but yeah, but it's a little sad. We, he's like, when I Nick, just when Nick Cage turns it down, man, yeah, I don't know, yeah, because he's hurting. He needs the money really he does bad. Need so the money. Cage or Travolta? Cage, Cage. He's got a bunch of tax debt still. Travolta's got money. He's fine. There he's got go. that Scientology he's got that money. Sweet he's good. Scientology money. Yeah. Um. He's got a nice big tax shelter for all his money. Right. <laughs> Well, also in this, uh, yeah, so I mean, Vivica Fox's character is not developed at all. She is just no. basically defined by the lines that she said, such as, there's evil out there and I got to kick its ass as we, she pulls away in her uh, uh, Winnebago. Yeah. <laughs> hunting the United States, finding out that like there's a, you know, where all these murders have happened. If you draw lines in between them, it forms uh, the devil's triangle pentagram, uh, pentagram yeah. on a map. So she's hunting evil which has somehow possessed this slacker, uh, Devin Sawa, to make him kill people in his town. Mm-hmm. He also kills his friends, his slacker, stoner friends across the street, Yep. Uh, which then they return to life. Shades of American Werewolf in London I was going to say here. definitely American Werewolf in London. Except here. in American Werewolf in London, uh, I get what's going on there because the guy is cursed yeah. and he can see the specters of the people that he killed. It's like it's guilt, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're bringing the guilt of the murders that you've committed along with you. Right. But uh, Devin Sama apparently killed his parents. They don't come back to life. Just his two stoner buddies. Yeah. And everyone else can see them. One of them's walking yeah. around with no head. Because they're actually zombies at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. They because they, it. they said that they yeah. just said no to going to yeah, heaven. They saw, right. they saw the light. Yep. Is that the and end they of the said no. Nah. It, it was too far. I yeah. am overthinking this movie. You are clearly, overthinking it. Because it's just like, fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. <laughs> they literally said that in the movie, Colin. Yeah. They said, fuck it. We'll do it live. No, they no. said. Do yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying when I do that? Yeah. Okay. But, Everybody seen Bill O'Reilly freak out on Instagram? Yes. It's, yeah. it's a pretty great clip. I keep hearing that every time going through my head. Fuck it. <laughs> we'll do it live okay so yeah so they're back to life and they're still hanging out on his yeah. couch mm-hmm, it's right. the perfect like uh you know yeah because his parents are dead so they're hanging out at his house party yeah he's house. happy about now. this yeah, yeah he didn't party you know house. miss his parents at all other than like oh my god they're on the floor i buried them okay we're good i don't have to worry about anything mm-hmm. i got my buddies they come back seth green's got a bottle sticking out of his head because uh yeah. devon sawa stabbed him with the broken bottle mm-hmm. yeah right 
And yeah. you're just like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, oh, appreci- this, yeah. I appreciate the makeup effects. Yeah, yeah, I think the yeah, makeup, I was going to say, looks really good. Yeah, yeah, I think. Greg Canham, he's been doing makeups forever. Yeah. And the man's a genius. He won an Oscar for uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really good. And yeah, like, it's effective. There's like he did, <sighs> you know, the Ozzy Osbourne. He turned Ozzy Osbourne into a werewolf for Bark at the Moon. The yeah, Lost that's Boys. cool. Yeah. Right? Wasn't that yeah. Greg Cannon? I think, I think it was. so. He's the one who, like said, I'm going to put vampire teeth, not the canines, but, but the, the ones inside. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. The, the bottle has, like, it's it moves a little bit, too, when, like, he moves his brow line, I noticed. Yeah. I, but, but, like, that makes it look more real. You know what yes. I'm saying? Like, the placement of it is really good, I think. Yeah, I like, think cause, that's. Because it's really, I mean, it's, it's full on, like, protruding from his forehead, and it's. You don't you don't notice like the seams where it where, yeah, it's, uh, where exactly. it's fastened into his face. Like, I actually thought like the yeah. blue like in the vein kind of design on him was actually really good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, this so. is the nineties where we're actually getting kind of good at this stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. This is before like we just said, no, you don't actually have to wear contacts. We'll just CG that shit in. You don't mm-hmm. have to wear the blue veiny makeup. We'll CG that we'll put on put some your... dots on your face and map it in later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. eventually then you're just turning people into fucking cats. Yep. And movies oh. where they're just like, God. were they even wearing leotards? Don't worry about the leotard. We'll just make a cat body and put your face on it. It's not a cat. Sorry, it's a person, a leotard, a sexless person. Yes, a genderless cat person. With flowing, <laughs> you know what we're talking about. That's Dude, right, you've seen <laughs> the, the cat's trailer. trailer has the dropped. cat's trailer just came out. And we're all disturbed. Why we're all they just very make freaked them out. cats? It, that's, why not just 100% CGI normal cats? I don't understand. Yeah, no, you it. can do the with the fucking Lion King. Yeah, well, right. You got cats in that. I would argue it'd probably be cheaper to do that. Even that seems because we've done that a million times, right? Like we've done CGI like, animals in a bunch of yeah. movies. So like you're making a movie called Cats. I make it see fucking cats. cats. I know. Not um, gymnasts know. with well, weird because, fur. Because this is that's what the Broadway production looks but like. But is that because you can't have actual oh, cats? I'm not. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying, like, they're just making it literally, like, from stage to, to screen. Right. Like, that's Broadway, literal translation. Broadway is the way it is out of necessity, you know? I know. Like, and this, I, I agree. I am this, with there's you. There's no, no need for this. There's no need for this. There is no need for this movie to exist. We could do a whole episode talking about the Cats trailer, We man. could. It's disturbing. <laughs> I mean, we watch a lot of horror on this show, but my God. Body yeah. horror. That Imagine is, David Cronenberg's it's a whole new cats. Thing. Oh, I hope God. David Cronenberg saw that and now feels the need to top it. You yeah. know, like David I hope that inspired him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> David Cronenberg's Beatles. Yeah. Oh, Something. He's already been there. It just wasn't a musical. But um, okay, so also in this very small neighborhood, Jessica Alba lives across the street. Yep. Girl next door. Saw was in love with her, but it won't appreciate it. It's that classic story of the guy who doesn't feel like he can actually go and approach the girls because she's super hot. Of course, he goes over there. Well, his demonically possessed hand takes him over there, mm-hmm. and then she's like a ravenous sex fiend. Yeah, I'm. What I, I was mean, like, wow, this no, is. <laughs> I'm like, is this movie written by a bunch of guys? Is this a bunch of uh, yes. you know, wish fulfillment? Yes. yes. No, it's produced by two women. It's <laughs> written by a woman. Uh, I'm assuming T E R R I Terry is a female. I don't. And know. a dude named Rob. I don't. Terry know and Rob. If Terry's a woman or not? I don't know either. I'm assuming. I don't know. Most male Terrys are the wise. Who knows? I don't know. So Terry and Rob wrote this movie. Two women produced that. I was just like, "Wow, this is uh, yeah, that is surprising. Yeah. That is, is surprising. It is, yeah. It's um, not a fan of that of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. I was like, Ugh, this isn't yeah, aging. Well, he, he, I mean, like he like full on like like aggressively grabs her ass, and she's like, "Oh, I didn't think you had it in you." I'm like, "Eh, mm-hmm. that doesn't age well for me." Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, but there are but, women out there who uh, you know appreciate that kind of thing. I think. This. It's probably safe to assume that's not the case, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right, listener. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Disclaimer. Let's, let's let's save the aggressive ass grabbing for when you're in a relationship and it's a little more, you know, ex- accepted. Oh, so there it is. It's accepted yeah. in the relationship. Aggressive I mean, at, ass grabbing. At that point, you probably know your boundaries. Yeah, you know. So she's across the street. Yeah. He's uh, she's extremely accepting of the fact that he's a uh, smelly uh, stoner dude yeah. with the blood streaked all over his, and aggressive uh, in the bedroom. They don't actually have sex. She has a no nudity clause, I think, but she like mm-hmm. gets as she close does. as she she's possibly always can. Had to, one. She's always every, yeah. She's always in, in a bikini or an underwear. Or yeah. Something. yeah. <clears throat> Even in um, 
Mm, was it Machete where she had the shower scene? Was it Machete? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That they CGI it's like yeah. she wore underwear when they shot it and they CGI'd it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That was yeah. like a big She's thing when that came out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Even though she clearly takes care of she herself all- so that she can do these scenes. But like why take but why continue <clears throat> taking roles that I don't understand. Okay. So her choice of roles makes no but sense. This if is what, what I do. don't get, right? It's like so so on screen she's naked in the shower scene. Mm-hmm. It's CGI. That's not her actual boobs or her ass yeah. or anything. It's but all CGI. Who knows that? Everyone does because it was a big story when it came out. This is only movie people know this. Mm, Cracked wrote a only big article about who, it. Vice right. wrote an article about but it. They re, they're interested in movies to actually find I, this stuff. No, out. I, I get what you're saying. Like most just, people just, just average, go and watch a an movie. An average movie goer would go and be like, "Oh, I just saw Jessica yeah. naked," and that's what they think. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand why she takes roles where like. What, like it's in Sin City, like that, like in the graphic novels, that character she plays is like naked the whole time. Yeah. Just like Eva Green, like why take those roles if know, that's not robbed. something you want yeah. to do? She robbed us of because uh, she's a stripper in that, but in the movie she's very modest stripper. Okay, sorry, I'm getting. I don't know. I mean, like if she she keeps picking roles that they allow her to. To, to do what she wants to do and they don't force it. I mean, God, good, could good you imagine her. being able to do that at your job? Good just being her. like, no, I don't want to do that and you don't have to. Mm-hmm. Must be nice. I mean, like, sometimes I do. do it must be nice job. to just be able to <laughs> determine your own boundaries at your job, yeah. you know? But they I mean, want Jessica that, Alba, yeah. so they will do whatever they can to get I mean, good for her that, that she keeps <clears throat> finding roles that she wants and that she, you know, follows what she believes in. Mm-hmm. Good for her. Appreciate that. There's also the hard rock truck driving kid across the street and knows everything there is to know about the devil because he listens <laughs> to Motley Cruz shout at the devil on a continuous loop. Yeah. How many times do we hear that song? We heard it a lot. Yeah. Like four or five yeah. at least. Yeah, because it says devil and this is a movie about devil possession. We don't know exactly why. I mean, this is the dumbest reason that anybody gets possessed in a movie. Usually you have to do something to get possessed. But no, you're just the laziest schlub, and that's who the devil likes to I mean, I, I do. Possess. I got to say, I do appreciate the fact that, you know, I think there was a time that all of us had a cassette or CD in our car that we just listened to over and over and over again. So that's not really One unrealistic. Song? If it Some people, if they really like the song, yeah. That's right. My sister was that guy. There you go. She drove me nuts. I love your sister. Same fucking song. <laughs> I this guy that's playing this character, man. I the way that they shot it, they made it seem like it was going to be a big reveal. So I was expecting like someone really famous, yeah. and then I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" Is guy? it just is it just me, or should that have should that part have been Sean William Scott? Like someone like that. That's what I was expecting. Right? I was like, "Oh, because like especially the way they pan up from like his feet up to his yeah. face." I was like, "Okay, yeah, who's it going to be?" I've seen that dude before in something. You know what he's else he's in? I've seen it. No, not offhand. I've seen I, him before I can too. See him, but he's playing an idiot yeah you know he's like a really doofusy character yeah i recognize maybe him for sure, in but... a military uniform okay uh, i don't know no. i looked at his imdb me. while we were watching because like what's this guy's name and then i was like immediately forgot it and there was nothing i recognized on his IMDb. <laughs> so i was like oh he just looks like someone else famous, i really thought probably. it should have been sean williams guy yeah okay. like it, yeah. it's just like any literally anyone more famous than that guy <laughs> <laughs> well, just so nobody accuses us of being an uninformed podcast can somebody look up and find out what that actor's name yeah, is just was... so we can reference because they'll be like oh yeah it's that guy i know him um but the uh so the whole deal is Sawa's got a possessed hand. He's killing people. He kills his friends. Uh, Jack Noseworthy. There you go. Jack Noseworthy. Noseworthy. What kind of fucking name is that? Plays that character. <laughs> he ends up hooking up with the demon hunter because I love the way that they meet. He has had a run in with Sawa, who's like, You know everything about the devil because you listen to Motley Cruz shout at the devil all the time. Right. <laughs> My hand is acting weird. And uh, what do I do about it? To which, basically, this guy has the greatest advice. Like, man, you can't have idle hands. You got to keep them doing something so you don't get into trouble. Right? Then he goes to a bowling alley. And then uh, Vivica Fox shows up. Sorry, that dude was in Event Horizon. Oh, really? That's what I know him from. Huh. And the Brady Bunch movie. (laughs) Which is also what I know him from. Mm-hmm. I saw that he played Bobby Kennedy in something. I was like, that sounds right. Yeah, he did. This okay. is uh, Jackson Nosegood. Nosewor- Noseworthy. 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 What's his first name? Not Jack. Jack. Uh, Jack Noseworthy. Jack Noseworthy. Also, Barb close. Wire, if you're, what? if you're at all like my brother who watched it all the time. <laughs> I've seen it. That's a awesome weird movie. Awesome title scene. 
<laughs> purple hair. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, what is it? Is, is the year was 2017, the worst year of my life? That's how the movie starts because it takes place in the year 2017. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. It's Casablanca redone. Is okay. So um, he cuts his hand off. Cuts is this uh, off. surprising to learn halfway through the movie? Uh, he severs that hand. He does. He's like this fucking thing is nothing yeah. but trouble. So I'm cutting it off. And he, at first, he tries to do it in a bagel slicer, which I this think is a, hilarious. I think this is the, my, the funniest part of the movie. To me. I like, yeah. Well, just the, the fact that they the cut to that guillotine. close up and then it was legitimately called the bagel guillotine. Yeah. Like that, it was like a as seen on TV product oh, yeah. called that. It was probably on the Ron Pope. Or, yeah, what's was, his name? Ron Pope, right? Yeah, that sounds yeah. right. That, fucking guy's that sounds right. Yeah. He probably sold it with that like fucking bacon tray that you put in the microwave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Never seen the flexible like muffin uh yes. come, they're like, yeah. You guys might No pa- stick, man. My Just parents <laughs> my parents had the set it and forget it oven. Oh really? Yep. <laughs> that For was real. like a cult. Because it's like the like, audience would yell it when you would do it yeah. in the infomercial. Set it and forget it. Yeah. That it's still in my basement. <laughs> like at my house, my apartment. That's awesome. It's there. You gotta bring that over. You got that pressure cooker that makes a lasagna? <laughs> what? Are that gonna, sounds are wrong. Are we gonna make a turkey next week? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Just put it in there and we'll set bam. it and forget, forget it. it. Yeah. <laughs> but I also like. I also like. I thought that. I. I mean, I got really hung up on the bagel guillotine joke. I, I was it. not expecting yeah. that. So I was laughing really hard. But then, like, the joke doubled down for me when, like. Like that guy was like, man, that thing barely. Sl- uh, Seth Green's like, that thing barely slices my bagels, man. Yeah. And sure enough, it just like kind of hurts your wrist like, a little bit. And just like crushes on yeah. his hand because it's so dull. <laughs> Those things are always so dull. And it bends the shit out of the yeah. blade. I yeah. Think. yeah, I think it's funny. Yeah, that I was pretty that funny. Bit. Well, there's a bunch of scenes then where the hand runs around committing uh, acts of carnage and mm-hmm. fondling of uh, women's breasts and cars. This is an R-rated movie, I assume. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, there's a bunch of fucks also. There's lots they of fucks, the, there's lots of blood, fucks. there's booze. Yeah, um, it's all there. It kills a teacher in like just a kamikaze kind of scene that comes out of nowhere. Because a lot of uh, the movie builds to a climactic Halloween dance where mm-hmm. shit goes wild, where the hand is trying to kill anybody. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the hand is trying to kill everyone like Carrie at the prom or yeah. at the, the dance the by dance. locking people in and tearing the fucking lock off so they can't get out. And then crawling up the walls and detaching, uh, you know, uh, the light fixtures and yeah, yeah. and it actually scalps uh, Dexter Holland from the Offspring. That's right, <laughs> pulls his fucking scalp off and exposes his brain because we all know that right underneath your scalp, your brain is right there. I didn't think it was brain. I thought it was. Was just, it? I no. thought you saw his brain. Uh, no, I think, muscle. I think it was just like okay, bloody, flesh, bloody. Right. Skull. I like it better yeah. when they just pull the skin back and they yeah, the brain. like there's no skull on yeah, top. Yeah, it's yeah. just like that's yeah. it. Like, it's bam, just a flesh flap. <laughs> uh, which of course Devin saw at that point. Now armless is or handless is trying to uh, a win the girl who likes him for again a motive I which I could know. not understand. No, this entire movie, I'm like, why is she suddenly like completely obsessed with this guy? I didn't get it. I don't know. There was no reason for it. Was yeah, no yeah reason. because the story said it was going to happen. And uh, there's a lot of action there at the climax because all of our uh, headless and uh, beer bottle impaled mm-hmm. uh, through the head friends are all hanging out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and then eventually there is a climactic moment when Vivica A. Fox shows up. Again, <laughs> the way that they me- she meets like the heavy metal dude. Yeah. He's in a bowling alley. Yeah. I think he's bowling. He's bowling. Right? Yeah. So imagine this, ladies and gentlemen. You're the long you're a descendant of a long line of druid monster hunters. You have found out that in the center of this pentagram on a map is probably where your quarry is headed. So you go you drive to that town mm-hmm. and you're like, I am gonna find the laziest motherfucker who is has a demon possessed hand. Mm-hmm. And so you go immediately to a bowling alley where you just happen to run into this guy who's like, yeah, earlier today mm-hmm. at the drive through, there was a guy uh, talking about his crazy possessed hand. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's serendipity. If there were two people who were meant to be together and meant to meet in this world, it's those two. It seems to me there was another like uh, scene where it was like, oh, wow, people found. Oh, it was when uh, uh, Jessica Alba and her demon-horned friend, 
Uh, she's in a Halloween costume, right? Jessica Alba yeah. is the angel, and her friend is the devil. devil. Uh, yeah. They crawl through a, a, a an air duct, a, an air duct yeah. to escape from the gymnasium, which is under attack from the hand. Yes, and the hand crawls in there. I'm like, yes. how did it know to go in there? How is it going after them? And it hangs the friend on a rope, and if they have to crawl through big, uh, you know, they have to crawl through the, fan. the vent fan, yeah. stop it, and there's a whole bunch of blood. Yeah. Eventually, they do kill the hand. When Vivica Fox shows up, Metal Dude shows up, uh, uh, Jessica Alba gets most of her clothes ripped off of her as she's being sacrificed on a, uh, in yes. a shop, right? Because a high she's school the shop. chosen one. The hand has chosen one person to drag to hell. How do you know that, Holly? How do you know this information? Vivica Fox told us. That's right. Vivica Fox just shows up and says this shit, and you're like, oh, that's what the hand's motivation was. Because I'm like, what is the motivation for anything that's happening in this movie? I couldn't figure this out the whole way through it. And then Vivica A. Fox would show up and just go like, well, it's because of this. Yeah. All your ins- all your questions have been answered. Yeah. Colin. I mean, there you go. Bam. It was completely obvious. She couldn't figure this out without her being in it. You couldn't cut her out of the movie, Michaela. You said that you could. You can't because without She's her, it doesn't exposition. make any sense. <laughs> you could have had Seth Green or actually would have made way more sense for Seth Green or Eldon Hansen to say that because like they're kind of, uh, they, uh, they've seen the other side now. So you could write in some bullshit about how like they have more knowledge. Now I was that they say, like... it, could be, it could be that they're sent back to help him. And yeah. Been given the knowledge. Shouldn't they have been connected in some way to the fact that there's a demon possessed hand other than like, oh, we saw the light. And we just said. I it mean, this is a comedy, so, so we can there doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have this to be movie's what? only trying to be funny, Colin. Wait, wait, That's wait. It. There doesn't have to be what? what, are you, what, what? I'm saying in a comedy movie that, like, in, in a horror movie, yes, that would be the case. In a comedy movie, no, there doesn't have to be. Doesn't have comedy to be. movie's only trying to make you laugh. It's yeah, not right. trying to make you do anything else. So comedy, you're overthinking you're saying, this. Don't have any kind of logic. Don't they don't have, have any to. Kind of reason. They don't, don't have make to. Any goddamn sense. They don't have to. The laziest made movies. I didn't say that. I didn't say they were lazily made. I'm just saying that they don't have the normal standards of other movies. Not all comedies. But I'm saying this particular genre. Especially stoner comedies. This particular genre, like a stoner horror comedy, yeah. Yeah. So the the general direction of a stoner horror comedy is like, yeah, and then this happens. Kind of. Yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. Because your audience can't remember what just happened in the scene before you. For that, because they're stoned also, I assume. And they're sitting there going like, yeah, I'm an old man. That's what I, th- I'm finally there. When you're watching a, a movie stoned, whether it is a stoner comedy or not, you're just looking for something to make you laugh and just some sort of stimulation. And that is it. Yeah. You, you, that's it. That's, true. that's all this, that's all this is supposed to serve. Yeah. All right, then. There's there's just specific. I mean, I remember yeah. I had my, uh, I was a teenager once and in my 20s. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of experience with this. <laughs> I missed this movie, apparently. Uh, you know, so well, Holly and I were talking off mic that, oh. like, I don't enjoy any stoner movies. Like, I don't no. find them funny. No. I don't with find the them stone relatable. Age? You haven't seen the Stone Age? I have no. seen the Stone Age. No, I like that movie. It's and I was really trying to like rack my brain for a stoner movie that like dazed and confused. I don't. That's, well, that's a that's I, specifically that's, that's like about a, I, being stoned, right? That's, I don't know. That's not, that's not specific. That's a much to, more highbrow movie. It is. I I love Days and Confused. I've seen it about a thousand. I, times. We're we're mostly we're talking about like your like pineapple. Dude, where's, like dude, dude where's, where's my car? car? Pineapple Express. Yeah. Uh, even like the Cheech and Chong movies. Like I've yeah, never okay. liked any yeah, of them. Not, yeah. It's not my. Not yeah, my thing. I've never watched yeah. one and been like, "This is awesome." No. Never. Like it's just not a genre I care yeah. for. Not. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, we're all in agreement on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I think it misunderstands its audience a lot of the time. I stoner think so comedies yes. or this movie? Yeah, stoner comedies. Stoner okay. comedies. In this movie, at the end, there is a scene in which basically it's all because it's all like Vivica A. Fox shows up. She's got the dagger. We've established that. Yeah. She whips it through the air. She impales the hand as it's trying to grab, I think, Devin Sawa or just Devin Sawa to prevent him from lowering. He's got her on yeah. a lift, a car lift, right in the auto shop. Where it's he's gonna, gonna crush her. Crush, uh, uh, you know, they're lifting her up to the ceiling. She's gonna get crushed on the top of a car, and so he's trying to pull the hydraulic lever to bring the thing down. Yeah, hands jumping through the air because this would demonically possessed hands do. Yes, she whips the fucking knife. It like impales the knife, 
and then it sticks to Seth uh, Green, and then it evaporates, and he says, I thought there'd be more to that. Because this movie was like, eh, then, it, then it's over, the thing evaporates. And it's like, it thinks it's being clever enough to have the character comment on that, that everybody feels cheated by the fact that, like, you stabbed it, it evaporated, and that's it. He mm -hmm. so he makes a comment. Oh, that's it. I thought there'd be more there. Yeah, I thought there would be two Seth Green. Mm -hmm. You and I are uh, seeing eye to eye in this moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you liked it though. Did I? Well, I mean, I feel like I'm like I'm slamming. <laughs> this is your movie, and you brought it, and I'm 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 shitting all over this moment. <laughs> but I mean, uh, did it work? Were you okay with it? I mean, you've I seen know. this movie a billion times, I've, right? Yeah, so it's I've seen like it, a like, billion times, Holly. That's all I do is watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the Devin Sawa in the little Devin Sawa shrine, yeah, yeah. right, with his poster yeah. all and, over and the wall. And she's going to be busy tomorrow, so she needs to make up for it today. That's why we're watching. Tonight. That's right. <laughs> okay. That's right. Okay. She just needs to maintain her schedule. It's true. So. I have family in town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. You it's haven't true. you haven't brought them into the, the sh they're like tonight. No, it's a watch. secret. They don't yeah, know. Yeah. Oh, they don't okay. know. I got you. They're, no, they're going to know I, now. I understand. They're going to know now. About all of the Teen Beat pictures <laughs> I have from 20 years ago, pasted yeah. all over my living room. Yeah. They don't know. It's like permanent wallpaper at this it point, is. right? It is. Just shellacked yes. to the wall. Yeah. It's a little yeah. sun faded in spots, but you know. <laughs> yeah. See, I, uh, the tape has gone yellow. <laughs> See, I, I know what this movie is. I know exactly what this movie is. So, like, I'm. Because you saw it when you were like. No, 99. So I was, what, a freshman? Yeah. Yeah. The nostalgia thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As I get older, I'm trying to crack this nut, right? Because I've brought movies on here too that, like, well, I saw this when I, you know, when I was in that era. 16 to whatever 19 mm -hmm. and i'm like this movie's great and then you watch it now and you still think that it's great like it still works for you the same way that it worked the first time you saw it mm. but to like a fresh set of eyes because i run into this all the time with you guys mm -hmm. like oh they did not like it at all yeah. <laughs> they didn't connect to it because now they you know you're not the same age as the characters or the humor has changed or the the frequent references to Baywatch and uh, really? what was the other show that they he references yeah. like they yeah, saw that on Baywatch and I saw that on There's something else but yeah. it's like wow this is the ninety nineteen ninety nine time capsule movie yeah. I mean yeah yeah it is a time capsule that's for sure I mean there's I know there's just there's just movies that if you know your friends you know that. Okay, this person is going to get it. This person is not going to get it. You just know. You know? That's Remember why you like the movie? No, I'm saying that's why I knew you wouldn't like it. Oh, 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 oh okay, I gotcha. Yeah, that's why you like Michaela, though. I'm bringing this movie, Michaela's going. We don't know Actually, if Michaela liked it or not. I remember seeing this on cable all the mm -hmm. time, but it was like edited to hell, oh, obviously. Yeah. Like it's yeah. super cut down. Is this down. your first time seeing the actual? I, no, I had seen it. Oh, it's probably been like 10 years, though, since I've watched it. Yeah. So it's been a yeah. long time. This is actually my first time seeing it because I skipped it because I saw the trailer. Oh, you had never seen it until tonight? Nope, this is first time. Oh. Yeah. See, uh, my prediction, and we'll, we'll find out, but my prediction, um, first of all, I was sad Sean wasn't going to be here because I think Sean would enjoy watching this movie. If I'm, sh I'm assuming he's seen it, but if, even if he hasn't, like I assume he'd enjoy it. You, I was like, Colin's going to fucking hate it. I know that. I, don't, I was like, I don't know if he's seen it or not, but either way, he's going to fucking hate it. I was like, Michaela's going to like it. I'm, I'm actually, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that I hadn't seen it. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do, listener. This is a uh, part of our shtick. We're going to we're going to take a pr a break. We are going to tell you whether or not we like the movie. Yeah. Like I said, I'm sitting here wondering what Michaela thought because I know mm -hmm. where Holly is. She knows where I'm at. <laughs> where is Michaela? I have an idea, but I could be surprised. You may be surprised. This is the most exciting part of the show. But before we do that. We're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to need the assistance of our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. 
Thanks, Igor. He's stoned out of his mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he always kind of looks like it, so it's hard to tell. You just got to smell him. Yeah, and he, smell him. Smell him. and he does have a bottle sticking out of his head, and he does have, like, you know, band-aids around the neck because, mm-hmm. you know, his head's been uh, reattached. So uh, many times. <laughs> so let's let everybody at home uh, remind them how they can get a hold of us on uh, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Set Freak Show. Uh, you can uh, email us Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com or you can follow along on Instagram for the time of your life, life at Saturday at Sat Freak Show. There you go. <laughs> uh, Chris Eklund writes in and he says, I was brailing the breaking episode really recently. So <laughs> yes. clearly he has listened to a lot of our <laughs> He's story. a hardcore listener. It's great. I love it. <laughs> he says, I made it halfway through the episode before I paused it to watch 30 minutes of various break dancing videos. <laughs> On YouTube, I absolutely love breakdancing movies. My wife laughs at me whenever I watch one of the many great movies. She's a good sport and watches half of them with me. I still love the show. This podcast does not disappoint. I think it's super cool that someone responds because, you know, obviously you write into us. We respond. There's only four of us. We yep. do that. Uh, I'm playing along with the in time drinking games. It's you guys kept making time puns, and then Sean yeah. said drink every time, which you'll be you'll die. I'm sorry, yeah. he's probably dead by yeah. now. So this he says dead. the puns from Sean are awful, but I love them, yes. and I drink for those. Cheers, Saturday Night Freak Show Skull. Thanks for writing in. I love it. It's great to hear That's from awesome. you. And he's a thank you, Brailler. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, dear Brailler. Yes. Where the fuck did that start? Because Sean. it was a long time ago. Yeah, Sean, dear reader. Sh- Sean said reviewer. he said. He, oh, said, he was saying no, he, he said was, people will download and braille the podcast. I said, Sean, if they're blind, they can just listen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, ever since then, we've just never let him forget that he thinks blind people need to braille a yeah. podcast. <laughs> braille a podcast. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, uh, that was a long time ago. Though. That was, was like two years ago. ago. But it's still funny. <laughs> it All right. Terrible. I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but... Fane Neufeld, Fane Neufeld says, damn it, I love you guys. I don't tell you enough. Keep on keeping on. I'm listening. Aww, that's really that's sweet. So sweet. Thanks, Brailler. Uh, <laughs> about, tonight, about tonight's movie, Idle Hands, uh, Ride or Do It Yourself says this movie contains peak Seth Green. Mm-hmm. Nuvato Judoka says it's a solid ho- horror comedy. It reeks of that sweet, nostalgic 90s stank. True. And for it, or for that, it goes in Halloween rotation. Yes. Uh, Appy L says Seth Green has a great comedic supporting role. And good Lord is Jessica Alba easy on the eyes. It's a movie of silliness and fun. Jim Otto says it's a really fun movie. Mm -hmm. Michael Whitaker says... And after this movie, no one heard of Devin Sawa again. Not true. Well, Final Destination. After Final Destination, no one heard of him again, I would say. Except for well, Fred yep. Durst. <laughs> Fred, <laughs> Durst. <laughs> Fred Durst has heard of him. So He also wants to know how this movie got made without a Bruce Campbell cameo. Yeah, how did that yeah, happen? I agree. Well, that would be too too on the nose, wouldn't it? And not, not for, for this, this movie. movie. <laughs> no, sure. so that means Bruce Campbell said no. There's literally someone called Idle Noseworthy yeah. in this movie. Yeah, there's... A- <laughs> Yes, no, it's worthy. <laughs> well, Stephen H81 says, I love this movie when it came out, and it's still in my Halloween rotation to this yes. day. I think it evenly handles the horror and comedy aspects to great effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amos Marti, oh, sorry, about uh, this would be last week's episode, Carnosaur. Amos Martinez writes in and says, Hi, guys, I haven't written since I killed my Facebook. Killed his Facebook. Oh, I don't blame you. I like mean, I get it. Is, I like took, murdered the thing. I took a break from Some, Facebook for Yeah, a sometimes time. you gotta yeah. do it the hard way, you know, kill it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he says, but I had to comment on this horrible movie. It sucks ass. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the absolute sure worst dino effects I've ever seen in a movie, and the story is so batshit stupid, it almost works. I have a big soft spot for it because it traumatized me as a child, although I was probably five years old when I first saw it. If you guys are still interested mm. in getting pictures... Of pets. Yes. Yes, yes we are. Yes, We're we always are. interested. Always. Always. I've got one here of my little horror movie <gasps> fan, Pepper, who unfortunately- It's a very fluffy cat, listeners. Uh, so cute. He says, uh, Pepper unfortunately passed away recently. Oh, no. I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, I'm so sorry. He says, uh, Pepper's f- uh, two favorite movies were Reanimator and Suspiria. He would sit oh, and watch it. either all the way through when I had them on. Oh. 
That's adorable. They're, I mean, they're very colorful movies, so. And it's Make also rest, a sweet baby. I love that if your pets oh. have favorite movies. That's I love yes, that. Yes, please yeah. send us a picture of your pet with its favorite movie. <laughs> yes. Dogs, cats, bunnies, whatevs. Yeah, what do they like it. watching? I want to see it. Uh, he also says, stay awesome. Thanks. Thanks for writing in. I feel I love it. feel special. You reactivated your Facebook to write us. That's, yeah, there you go. That's right? so amazing. Yeah, feel yeah. very special. Well, Thank you. Quite an honor. Thank you it very really much. It really is. Uh, America about uh, the previous episode, American Ninja Cobra Can Kumite Art <laughs> love says it. it's awesome. an awesome movie. All right. I mean, Colin thinks that. Colin definitely <laughs> agrees with you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> American Ninja. Uh, so that brings us to that moment that you've all been waiting for. Colin, what did you think of tonight's <laughs> movie, Idle Hands? <laughs> oh, man, I uh, had a really, this is rough. This was, uh, I mean, I think I was thinking back to, this is about as rough to me as uh, my boyfriend's back. Mm-hmm. I think, and they felt like the same. It's like, these are horror movie comedy things mm-hmm. that uh, don't succeed at doing either. No, I didn't find any of it funny. To me, it felt like, um, you know how like, well, I don't know, this is maybe, uh, you know, like a, a, a child can be very hyperactive and bang a bunch of shit around trying to get attention, trying to make it seem like, you know, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's full of that kind of camera work and the editing and the overacting of Devin Sawa being attacked by his own hand. Uh, I, I didn't like or believe I wasn't a appealed uh none of it was appealing to me uh i hated this movie i hated this movie <laughs> right i uh, i mean it was a yeah it was just rough uh i wouldn't recommend it to a single living soul at one point i came back to because again i i try to go into everything kind of especially if i haven't seen it and i'm like okay well then holly will do the research and she'll have all the information on the movie so I'm not going to look at anything. All I remember is that there was a trailer, which I can't remember any imagery from. I don't remember the trailer. I just remember seeing the trailer and being like, that movie looks like a steaming pile of shit. So that's the only impression I had of this movie. I came back about, I don't know, I was like halfway through it. and I was so like losing my mind. Like I hated it so much. I came back to the bar to get a beer. Is that when you had the donut? You're like, I have yeah, to have a donut. Yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna have a donut because that was buying me time to like. I just, I'm curious what the Rotten Tomatoes like score is. Oh, it's 16. Yeah, percent Everyone it, hates it. So it I'm has like, a big cult following. Not, I was gonna say not everyone hates it. It has a big cult following. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the sane minds at the time who reviewed it uh, and said it was an awful, horrible piece of trash. Uh, I believe that they are correct. I mean, just, I didn't have any fun with it. I hated it. Every single scene, it made no sense. It's just people do it. There's no characters. There's no plot. There's no rhyme, no reason. It's just basically like, I mean, if you bang a, uh, you know, a couple of tin pots together, it makes a lot of noise. And I guess it's, there's kinetic action there, but uh, all it really does is uh, grate on your nerves and drive you kind of crazy. So you can, uh, Stay sane, listener. Avoid idle hands. Michaela, tell us how great it is. <laughs> uh, Holly and I were talking off mic. Uh, the thing I was most shocked by when I was like, I was reading a little bit about this movie before we started recording, and I was floored by the box office numbers for this movie. I, because like I've grown up in the time always knowing this being a cult classic. My uh-huh. brothers love this movie, they're obsessed with it. They've seen it a bunch, which I don't know how I haven't seen it a bunch because of how much they loved it, uh-huh. but must have been a later thing for them too. But uh, this movie cost $25 million to make. Yeah, this is before the Blumhouse model said, no, we make those movies for like Yeah, this was 1. expensive. 5. This was yeah. an expensive movie. Yeah, and it, movie was though back then. It made $4 million. Yeah. It lost a lot. That is a huge <laughs> failure of a movie. Like that, that blew me away. Because, like, like I said, yeah. in my mind, this has always been like a cult movie. So I was like, yeah. I was like, maybe it broke even was my thought. So when I saw that, I was like, holy shit, that's wow. Um, I don't expect a lot from stoner movies. Like as we talked about, like I don't enjoy any of them. I, mm-hmm. I've been thinking more about it the time we've been talking. Like I guess I guess Half Baked is like watchable. Like yeah. I can like, but at the same time, that's on Comedy Central all the time. I don't yeah. need to watch it that often. I don't like, make it a point to watch that movie. No, yeah. exactly. I don't ever go out of my way to watch a stoner comedy ever. Yeah. You know, like it's they're just not they don't work for me. Mm-hmm. And it's not because I don't understand. Uh, what it's like to be stoned. That's not the problem. <laughs> it's it's just not... It's, it's What Hollywood thinks a stoner movie should be and what their actual audience wants are two completely different things. Yeah. 
Uh, I think James Franco got closer with Pineapple Express, but that movie still doesn't work for me either. I agree. Um, so it's just not a genre I care to revisit, and it's just not... It, uh, nothing new ever develops out of this genre. It's always mm-hmm. the same thing. So that being said, my expectations were pretty low because I was like, I know it's a stoner comedy. Yeah. I know it's Seth Green. When it's Seth Green, you know where you're bad <laughs> at, right? Like, that it's guy true. plays the same thing in every fucking movie he's ever in. He never does anything different. He is always just Seth Green and everything. Yeah. And... The Attic Expeditions, I'm telling you. Change your life. Yeah. <laughs> um, and But that being said, uh, this movie caught me off guard a lot. I laughed a lot more than I thought I was mm-hmm. going to. And so, like, some scenes really got me good, and I was not expecting that. Yeah. Um, I, I So I liked it for that. Like, I a lot of the times, too, I was trying to figure out, like, I thought, do you know, Holly, like, how some of the effects with, like, uh, Eldon Hansen, like, being headless and stuff were done? Because, like... Some of the, like the one with his head in the chair that looked like obviously he was just like th- stuck his head through the yeah. back of the chair or whatever, but like some of them I was like man th- these look really good you know well, some of it was CG mm-hmm. yeah you know, but just... for ninety nine it but still looks some good of them, I think were mechanical heads yeah 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 no you're you're uh, you're yeah. absolutely right in all of that there, yeah there was just practical like sticking your head through a hole situation there or was through, a table. C- yeah. through a table yeah through a table there was or some it was CGI. His head- through a hole but when the guy would pick him up yeah that's when it cut to like yes. a cgi yeah cg and the, like a lot of it was practical some of it was cg yeah. but i think like the flow of it was really good i thought so too yeah, yeah. I, was, I was surprised like i expected it all to look way shittier than it did yeah. and um i something about like the humor of like a body like doing things aimlessly on its own without its head is really funny to me like that scene <laughs> that scene where the head's on the couch the and the kid, body's in the kitchen just like stumbling around behind them that was really funny to me for some reason so I I, I it, this movie worked on me I didn't expect it to I didn't really know what to expect walking into it because like I said I don't really like stoner movies yeah. so um but like it had enough other things going for it that like like the only joke wasn't just that they're high you know right, there was yeah. other jokes in it and so that's why I think it worked for me yeah and I think that's what stoner comedies need to do if they want to mm-hmm. be successful it seems like now comedy's kind of just taken the route of like have you guys noticed lately well you probably haven't gone because you haven't watched <laughs> but, uh, like modern no. comedies like instead of like being stoner movies like in regular comedies now they'll just be a scene where like a character's tripping on acid or tripping on some sort of drug mm-hmm. like the night before has that like yeah. Uh, like every fucking like post 2005 comedy is like they inadvertently get drugged or they purposely take acid and like it causes a whole like second act like craziness yeah. and that seems like a cheap cop out to me to do weird stuff so I don't like it either uh, yeah Um, but I do like this movie I recommend it Holly yeah Um. well you'll be surprised to hear uh, who will be <laughs> who's gonna be surprised nobody I love okay. this movie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with you, Michaela. I do not like stoner movies. I think they're stupid. I'm not saying this isn't a stupid movie. It is. This is a really stupid movie. But for me, the comedy part works. Not all of it. Some of it, it it's it doesn't land. But for the most part, I think the uh, Seth Green is playing Seth Green and everything. But he has a comedic personality that works in this movie. I think it. Plays. I found him more funny in this than most yes, things I watch exactly. him in. I it, like Seth Green. Okay, yeah. I did like Seth Green. Right? He has an appealing personality. He's, yeah, he has an appealing personality. Yeah. There's something about his comedic timing that it works in this. There's like a calmness about him that he's just kind of like natural about it. Like mm-hmm. I, I like his persona. Um, so for me, like I, I, I like that that part of this movie. I think he's funny. I don't think everything about this movie is funny. I thought most of the jokes were stupid. I thought most people weren't funny, but he works. And um, um, what's his name? Foggy. What's his name? Uh, Eldon Hansen. Thank you. I th- I think he's <laughs> got for a second. I was like, <laughs> I don't remember his name. <laughs> but I think he's funny too. I think I think they both work in this. Um, as far as like the stoner buddies, I think they pull it off well. Um, but I mean. Beyond like the comedy part, this movie, unlike a lot of 90s horror movies, this gives us the gore. Like, you know, we've watched a lot on this show that didn't give us much blood or much violence or anything. But this actually gives us quite a bit of blood. Like there's there's quite like the moment when he's eating the burrito and his neck starts leaking like that was disgusting. You know, when when his head gets chopped up, like there's a lot of blood in this movie. And I appreciate that because there's so many 90s horror movies that don't deliver on that they just give us like the diet version you know we got all of them all of them right all of them so that's one thing i like about this it was refreshing to finally get one that actually gives us the blood which for me is what i want like i love horror comedies but i don't love when it's not enough horror you know i like the balance 
Um, so for me, it really worked. And I think like it, it, it checks off the boxes that you expect from a movie like this. Yeah, it's going to be a stoner movie. It's going to be, you know, a bit of a comedy, but it gives you the blood. It gives you, it, it gives you like, um, what, what is it? Like the boobs, the, the blood, the swearing, like it gives yeah. you what you're expecting the from beasts. this movie. Yes. It, like it, del- it delivers on, on those things. So like for me, this, this movie delivers what I fully expected from it. Um, Ian, and honestly, like you said, a, on a, a surprising level, like it's more enjoyable than, than I thought it would be. And for me, like, it's still enjoyable. I still giggle at it. Um, and I, I enjoy, I, I enjoy it. Like our, like our dear Brailers are saying, like it's a Halloween rotation movie. Um, I think it's going to become one of mine now. Yeah. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, so I definitely, oh, also it was filmed in the same neighborhood as Halloween, by the mm. way. Really? Funness huh. there. Yeah. Um, the house looks a little bit like the Elm Street it, house, but yeah, it does. I was a like, little bit. Man, it's the wrong door. Do they change the door? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. There, I, I mean, I think we all do this. Anytime there's a movie or there's a house in a movie, we instantly start trying to figure out where else we've seen that house because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you know you've seen it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. we all do that. But yeah, it was filmed in the same neighborhood. Cool, as Halloween, which I think is great. But yeah, I like this movie. I think it's a lot of fun. It is stupid, and don't expect it to be groundbreaking. But I think you can expect to have fun with it. So yeah, I recommend Idle Hands. All right, so that's Idle Hands on the Saturday Night Freak Show final word. And uh, that means the next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Kayla. What are we watching next week? We are going to finish up our summer tour of Man vs. Nature movies. Yeah. Are we into August already by the time this airs? Yes. My, okay. Yes. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Fucking year is going... God damn it, it is amazing. because so I did the math on my next pick, right? And my next pick would be like the first week of September. I was like, well, I got to end it now. Oh, then. Okay. So because like, yeah, because we wow. only we only get like two picks close to Halloween. So you got to take advantage mm-hmm. of those picks. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's why I'm like, I got to cut it off now. Um, <laughs> so we're going to finish it up with a newly released Shout Factory Blu-ray. We're going to watch Strays the from, cat ni- movie? The, from 1980 something. 90 something um, <laughs> it is it is yes, it is about just household regular normal cats attacking that a family day. that moves into an abandoned house are we gonna so get another bad. sleepwalkers um no because there's like no paranormal element to this movie like the killer cats it's what? like the birds they're just regular cats what? yeah Only they're just regular cats, cats. that's oh what makes god. it amazing i haven't seen this so now i am yeah. curious oh my god it's it's two, two weeks in a row i know of colin never i seen. love it yeah. what yeah. going yes. in this is a discovery we, we started with it we started with the dog with man best friend we're gonna end with cats and okay. strays so. Bring it on. Right, strays yes. next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, ladies and germs. And until then, the basement is going dark.